Greetings, my name is Chris Boris, ghost behaviorist, and you're about to watch the world's very first 90 minute interaction with a spirit. Now I recorded this back in 2012 and not one person has been able to duplicate these results since then. Now at the time I did this because I was getting frustrated with paranormal TV. They would keep doing the same thing over and over again and not learn from their experiences. So when I went out, I had this new ideology of using psychology, sociology, and ancient texts and using those in the field. And it was a working theory at this point, but I thought if I went to one of the most haunted places in the United States and took my best friend, Alan Sisko, who's also a psychologist with me, we would hit the ground running and that's exactly what we did. So I present to you for the very first time, the very first 90 minute interaction with a spirit. My name is Chris Boris, and I'm the first ever ghost behaviorist. I interact with spirits by studying their behavior patterns. So you were involved in that crash, correct? And I come armed with psychology, sociology, and ancient texts to connect with a spirit on a higher level, which has never been done before. Oh, oh I got goosebumps I on that one. That. With these new skill sets, I can talk with them. Did you die in this room? Interview them. And really get into their psyche. Do you want to kill somebody? Which in turn helps me to diagnose them. Stop it. The spirit is lashing out at you because he's trying to get your attention. I will show you the lighter side of a haunting. Wow, you're laughing at us, aren't you? emotional side. Are you still working through that? The tragedy of that? Nice. Yeah. And the problems they are working through, like post-traumatic stresses and coping disorders. Come on, you can't leave us in the dark like that. You give us that word. I've seen many spiritual situations spin out of control. Maybe I need to find another home. That kills me even thinking about that. And I'm here to educate them on what to do. I need to get you to start seeing things through the spirit's eyes. Hauntings in this world are on the rise and it's because these bigger issues are at play. I'm here to counsel the dead and help empower the homeowners they haunt. Ooh, you're right here, aren't you? The next level of ghost hunting is here because the ghost doctor is in. Today our travels have brought us to St. Augustine, Florida, which is home to the infamous St. Augustine Lighthouse. The actual lighthouse tower was built in 1874, with 219 steps leading all the way to the top. Anyone making the journey to the lookout tower is treated with a fantastic view of the city. But inside the tower is where many reports of haunted activity occurs. Visitors have seen apparitions of children, shadow people roaming the stairs, and even on one occasion, Ghost hunters were able to capture a shadow person on video as it leaned over the tower's railing. One of the things we're hoping to do tonight is to make contact with the spirits here. Once the sun finally sets, we're now anxious to get inside and begin pursuing the paranormal. All right, we're here at the St. Augustine Lighthouse. Uh, I'm here with Matt, uh, the tour guide. Uh, so Matt, we wanna know where all the paranormal hotspots are, so can you give us a tour? Before I take you guys through the entire site, I do want to tell you guys something, and that's generally what I tell everybody when they come on the tour, and that activity really happens everywhere around here. This is the ground floor of the house, the level we refer to really as the Coast Guard room. We have heard these chairs get moved during tours, sometimes when we're going through these hallways, sometimes in the basement, which can be kind of terrifying when you just hear that noise from above you. So that goes downstairs and pretty good. Oh, you'll hear it. Good, 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 good. This hallway and the next one we're going to go through, they are originally stairs because this house was in fact originally a duplex. One side for the head keeper, one side for the assistant keeper. We do occasionally hear footsteps coming from these hallways every now giggling, probably some of the girls hmm. playing pranks on us. But this one night, we had a few people out in this hallway and they heard footsteps. But this time, they sounded like they were going up to the gallery. Oh, wow. But I had a few people later that night during the tour really frantically rush out, and what they showed me was two footprints. They were the size of a child, dirty, and barefoot. We didn't have any kids wow, on the tour that night. Yes, they pretty much would have been something along the lines of this. One, two, and where that third step should have been, 
Well, that's where the stairs would have started. Wow. Oh. We tried wiping them off, they wouldn't come off. Mm. Then after about three weeks, they just sort of faded. <laughs> so, welcome to the basement, guys. This is one of the very few in Florida, and it's one of my favorite spots here. Mm. Now, an interesting thing has happened between me personally as a tour guide and one of the spirits here, Eliza Pity. When I started giving tours, I was 16. Eliza, when she would have drowned, was 15. It very quickly became a joke that right around that age, we could have been married. And it soon started happening that with EMF activity and other things happening around me, we were pretty sure it was Eliza, so we started saying she had a little crush on me. And then it started escalating to the point where she started getting jealous of other girls that sat near me. Oh, wow. Now, how often does this happen? For me, I would say nine out of 10 nights, I have some activity wow. with Eliza okay. talking to so, so she's been known to follow me around. So it, okay. it doesn't matter if you're by yourself or with people, does it? It does not. Wow. Has anybody seen her down here then? Not particularly in this part of the basement. We have seen shadows of what I'd say full adult males, for example, one of the keepers moving past this hallway. Oh, wow. We've had a few people say oh. they've stood here, looked down that exact hallway, and seen a keeper just walk out and stare at the group while they took pictures. Do it pictures. now. <laughs> so, wouldn't that be fantastic? Now, you are sitting in what we like to call Pete's chairs. Now, these are called Pete's chairs and really Pete's room after Peter Rasmussen, who was one of our keepers here until about 1924, and he's known to be very possessive of those chairs. Another keeper that I've encountered is William Harn, who was actually a Civil War hero that was the first keeper to wear a full uniform here. I've talked to him and his wife, Kate Harn, through a variety of EMF conversations and hearing noises in the tower. So there's a couple different keepers that what are, are still here. Kate and... William Harn and Kate Harn. William Harn, Kate Harn. I don't remember. Pete Rasmussen, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So, you guys want to go check out the tower? The tower. Yeah, let's go All check right. out the tower. Let's go, guys. All right, Matt, tell us what's going on in this lighthouse. Well, right now we're at the base of the tower, and as you can see, we have a lovely view above us. And for a lot of people, when they're in here, they experience something we like to call our shadow figure. Most of the time, leaning over, looking down at somebody, and I've talked to a few people, that told me as they start going back down, they look down and they'll see him looking up. Oh, wow. Now, on one of those topics of what the light keepers would have to do, they would have to take a 30 pound bucket up these stairs full of hot oil every two and a half hours. We have one of the buckets down towards the oil room. Sometimes it sounds like something's almost kicking it, playing with the handle. Every now and then, we hear it being completely picked up and just dropped. We've had a few people come back through the store, tell us our reenactors out there are really nice. This was before we had reenactors. Yeah, I guess they are very interactive. Mm -hmm. Wow, great. Okay, yeah, I think uh, that's about it. We'll go ahead and get started then. All right, sounds good to me. All right. This is the first time we've actually done a lighthouse, and they've got a lot of spirits roaming these premises. Well, let's go ahead and set up base camp on the uh, third floor. I think we should have uh, another camera in the basement. I think that'd be a good idea. I think maybe in a room with um, Peter Rasmussen. Lighthouse is gonna be a great place for the investigation. There is numerous amounts of activity that has been reported. I'm hoping tonight that we're gonna be able to catch at least some of this activity directly on film, whether it be EVP or whether it be actual apparitions right. and full body apparitions. The camera angle I really wanna get in the lighthouse is taking a camera and aiming it straight up into the lighthouse because we've gotten numerous reports of an apparition or, or a shadow-like figure looking over the railing and looking down or looking up in some instances. So if we can get this on tape, it'd be great. I think that's almost perfect. That's perfect, yeah, that angle's good. Well, we're leaving now. If you have anything to say while we're gone, please do so. If you wanna look over the edge to see that we're gone, you're more than welcome to. One interesting thing I've noticed already with this place is it's got a quirky kind of energy. So hopefully we can get something on film tonight.
hoping this should be interesting here. Definitely going to hear noises if this place has any to uh, offer us. So people are reporting shadow people, seeing things racing up the steps. I'm not seeing anything. Got a pair of lights here. I'd like for one of you to come over here next to these lights. Let us know you're here. One of the devices that we use is a K2 meter, and this gives you a visual spike if something is disrupting the electrical field in an area. And if a spirit is nearby, then this thing will spike. Did you hear that? Uh oh. Is there anybody here? Does anybody need help up there? Hello? Is there anything we can help you with? Do you want us to carry a bucket up for you? Be more than happy to. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm seeing something. Like movement. Is that you walking around up there? There's a bucket up there. Can you drop that bucket? Do you hear that? Did you hear that? That's a girl voice. It's not like the woman. We hear you. Are you playing with us? I'm going to go up a couple flights, maybe. Okay, you do that. Are you way up there? I can't tell if that was the wind or if it was somebody up there. Hear that? Footsteps. You hear that girl? You hear that? That's a girl's voice. It's either giggling or laughing or something. Again, we heard another disembodied voice. You hear that? I don't know if I should go higher or... Hello? Are you the keeper of this lighthouse? I'm not seeing anything either. Not like shadows or anything. Unfortunately, I'm not really sure where those, I heard those footsteps coming from. While I went off to explore the top of the lighthouse, Alan was about to have his own encounter down below.
there's someone in here that would like to talk with us, I'd love for you to come near me, come close to this light so I can hear, so I can detect that you're here. Or are you trying to hide? You can touch me, you can poke at me, you can laugh at me, but definitely this device I'm holding in my hand definitely touched this. You can pull it right out of my hand if you'd like, actually. Is there anybody down here? Anybody? Okay, let's go back up. I'm going to go back up to the top. She doesn't like you. <laughs> What's that? The entire time you were in that room? Yeah. And in that room, it spiked. As soon as you walked into the hallway, it stopped. When you got into the next room, it went back up again. She doesn't like you. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> so I was down in the lower level of the lighthouse. Uh, you were in the hallway where I was walking through there, and you were actually getting some hits on the K2 meter. What exactly were you getting hits with? Well, I was pretty much getting spikes whenever you weren't around. When you would walk Closer to me, the spikes would stop, and then as you walked into the keeper's office, I would get some spikes, and then you walked out into the hallway. I sort of gently mouthed some questions with a little bit of volume. First I asked, you don't like him, do you? The meter spiked. Is it because of his beard? Nothing. Do you not like his short hair? Nothing. And then I asked if you were being too loud, and then it just sort of spiked, so she apparently doesn't like the volume of Boisterous your voice. Boisterous voice, great. So far this evening, I felt like we were just being teased by these spirits. I would go upstairs, things would happen downstairs, I'd go downstairs, things would happen upstairs. Now once things start happening around Matt, I thought, you know what, this is the perfect opportunity to bring him into our investigation and use him because the spirits already have a rapport with him and that'll give us the key to building a quick comfort level with the spirit. So now it's time to go back into the house with Matt as part of our investigation team. Hi, we're back again. We're just here to check in on you, see if you're uh, willing to talk to us yet. We've got our friend Matt with us. I'm sure you remember Matt. You want to come out and say hi to him? I got a light on the table. All you have to do is turn it just ever so slightly to make it light up. Just play with the top of the light. If you do that, it'll basically light up and we'll know you're here definitely. That would be excellent if you could do that. It'd be really great. Whoa. Me and Alan were asking if someone can turn this flashlight on, and seconds later it just powered on by itself. Whoa. Okay, can you turn it the other direction? Can you actually, can you turn it off maybe? Can you move it in the other direction? I would really, really greatly appreciate it if you could. I gotta tell you what, I'll turn it off. Now you have to turn it on again. Can you do that for us? Can you? We'd appreciate it. Is that too hard for you to do again? After a few minutes of getting no response, we decided to head down into the basement. Hmm, now I'm feeling... You feel that? Whew. I'm feeling really odd down here. Hello? Oh, man. Alan. Yeah? You gotta get down here. It's like, hey, like the hairs on the back of my neck are standing up. We've done enough investigations that when we're in an area where you just feel that whatever it is, you know something's there. I walked down into that basement and I felt that feeling. I'm like, something's happening. Something's going on here. Hello. So take it back up if this is Eliza. Oh yeah. I'm Chris, and that's Alan. Nice to meet you. Do you want anybody to leave? Did you hear that voice? Yeah, I heard a voice. I swear it said yes. I heard it coming from that area. I just... Oh my God. 
I'm feeling so weird right now. Is that you? It's like I want to sit down or something. Got my little light with me again. If you would want to come close to it to um, let it light up. Was that you that just brushed up against that knee? Yeah. Tell you what, why don't you use these two meters as yes and no? Use this meter as yes, use this one as no. Can you do that? Hit that one if it's yes. She likes him. Did you oh, did you? I said she likes him and it started blinking. <laughs> Can you spike it? Yeah. Again, we heard another disembodied voice. You like having fun around here? Excellent. Do you like all the visitors that show up? and go through here. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of fun, isn't it? Lots of different people. Excellent. Yeah. Is Matt your boyfriend? Is this Eliza we're talking to? Are your sisters here as well? Now you have two sisters, correct? Okay, one sister. Do you know about Harriet? Oh, you do know about her. Is she here too? No, she wouldn't be here. How do you know about her? <laughs> this is wild. After the pities, after the incident, when the pities moved back up to Maine, they had another daughter. Her name was Harriet. Have, oh, you, okay. have you been keeping track of them? Are your parents here? Interesting. Oh, okay. Interesting. Can we hear your voice right now? No, okay. Is it hard for you to talk to us so we can hear you? Is it hard for you to push things around? Yes. Probably takes a lot of energy, huh? Yeah, I thought it would. Let me ask you this, because I'm very curious. Is being alive the same as being dead? No. No. You realize you're dead, right? Are you alive? He wants to change the subject. Are you still here with us? No. Once I brought up the topic of the afterlife, Eliza stopped talking to us. Can you make those meters go off anymore again? I'm sorry, sorry to ask you to do so many things. I, I, but appreciate it if you would make the meter go off again so we know that you're still here with us and we can actually register it that way. Are you still here with us? <sighs> I got that feeling again. It's back. Are you trying to touch me? Is there someone in here that's touching Chris? Let's see the range they have. Look at this.
Look at that. Is uh, Peter down here? Is he in his house? Is he upset that some people from Ohio are here? <laughs> <laughs> it spikes. Do you know what Ohio is? I don't know if it was a state when she was around. Yeah, Ohio was in 1803, I think it was. Founded, yep, see. Do you like hanging around this area? Do you get tired of being asked the same questions over and over? No? Do you like people talking to you? Do you like certain people talking to you? <laughs> Fantastic. You're not outside, but you're not in here. Are you above us? You're above us. Are you directly above us? No. Are you floating above us? So like, in this room, but just like right around here? Where that, where that red dot was? No, I don't think so. Like right here, are you right here? Where my hand is? So like, so right where our hands are. So, do you have a, a body still? Can you walk through walls? So I'm just trying to see what all you can do. I'm, I'm curious. Are you still with us? Seems like every time I ask about something about the afterlife, she moves, she, she moves away from us. It's kind of telling. Maybe she doesn't want to. It's yeah. There's a couple. Face of, it. It's like yeah. It, or a roadblock. That, that, yeah. There's a denial. There's that nervousness about it. Are you still here with us? If I asked you something I shouldn't have or embarrassed you, I I apologize. Wait for Alan to go. Way to go, Chris. <laughs> Yeah, it's not me this time. <laughs> but yeah, it's whenever it, we talked about it, I just... Yeah, it went dead both times. Again, not that many people ask about that, so it, it probably caught her off guard. Right. Now, what had transpired had baffled us all. I mean, the conversation was going great, we were having fun, and then as soon as I brought up something about the afterlife, bam, the conversation came to a complete halt. Maybe we should go away and give her like a break and let her just kind of recoup and because her energy could be weakened now because she's been interacting so much. Eliza, if you'd like, you can take my energy and you can juice yourself up and make yourself feel strong. If you want to just take energy from me and use it, I'm more than happy to let you have some. If you need to make yourself strong again so you can start talking to us, I'd be more than happy to. Just take it from me. I'm, I'm willing to let you take it. You know what we should do too is bring the um, food offering, a kid and fudge. Do you like fudge? We'll bring some down for you. Oh, that got your attention. Oh. All right, I promise we'll bring some down here in a little bit, okay? We were explaining that we're going to bring down fudge if she would like that in a K2 meter shot all the way up and she seemed to be very excited about the idea. Okay. Now, are there certain things I shouldn't ask you? Okay, I apologize. So let me ask you this. Are there certain things that you're not allowed to tell us? Does it have to do with the questions I asked you? No? Are there certain things that we're not supposed to know?
Will you get in trouble if you talk about them? Uh -huh. hmm. Can you not, in the best physical way, communicate those ideas with us? So even if you wanted to, you could not make our meter spike or communicate in any way about those topics? Boy, that's a strong, wow, really strong reading. So right there's there. certain things about the afterlife that we're not supposed to know, correct? Oh. But you're allowed to tell us that we're not allowed to know. Are you not allowed to tell us we're not allowed to know? Liza? Hello? Are you still here? I think she probably doesn't like talking about that. Well, guess what? You know, we just, she's now she's gone again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious if, because I, I was saying, are you allowed to tell us that we're not allowed to know? And it kind of said no. So, and you're saying, are you going to get in trouble? Which is, brings up a lot of questions, but. Well, I don't know. It seems like we're getting conflicting answers at some point, though. She might be getting confused about it. I mean, she is only 16. Even if even if there's rules rules governing the afterlife, she might not be comprehending them at her age. Yeah. You know, so she's still kind of learning Which as a spirit. Up, she was 15. She's now, you know, technically well into her 150s or so. Right. So that brings up another interesting question of aging and. Well, spirits spirits take a long time to learn something. It takes them so long to get out of ruts. Now this conversation blew us all away. I had never seen anything like this happen on TV before. And by using this new technique, I mean, we opened the floodgates. We found out so many amazing things like spirits retain their memories. They have a sense of humor. They knew that family members were born after they had died. I mean, how amazing is that? And of course, the biggest bombshell of them all, there are rules to the afterlife that spirits have to follow. Amazing. All right, let's head up. That was cool. But this information is very compelling. And before we move forward, I want to find another spirit and confirm what we heard from Eliza. This door is open, though. The door's open? Yeah. See, it's not closed all the way. Oh. It was just, it was just like that. After our intense K2 meter uh, session, we came back upstairs and the front door was ajar. Was this door locked before? It wasn't locked, but it was shut. Mm. Did somebody open this door? Also more intriguing is that during our K2 session, our camera in the lighthouse picked up this sound. Could this be the oil bucket being dropped that people report hearing? Do you want to go into the uh, lighthouse now? Because I got to change the battery anyway. Okay. Hello? Jeez, I'm feeling something in this room too. There it is again. Elijah, is that you who's here? No. Are you a lighthouse keeper? Are you male? Okay. Did you used to work in a lighthouse? Were you part of the family that was here at the lighthouse? Do you not belong to anybody that was here at the lighthouse and you're just a wandering spirit? Hmm. Now I gotta say, Alan asked some really great questions to confirm that what we were talking to was indeed a wandering spirit, something that's never been talked about on TV before. Even though that myself and Alan have encountered these things countless times, they are talked about in various religions, we were able to confirm for the very first time that yes, spirits do wander. 
do you like the lighthouse? Are you here with us still? It's so weird because we haven't encountered one shadow person and that seems to be like this area should be like the hot spot for that. Can I shine your light up really quickly? Yeah, I know, I know there's a reason for that, I think. Are you gonna finally show yourself to us? feeling now. Do you want me to come up there? Whoa. Okay, two meters going off again. Is this the same spirit I talked to before? No. Are you Eliza? Hmm. Yeah? Eliza, are there other spirits in here with us? Besides you? Are you the only one here? Hmm. So she's, she's the only one here? Seems like it. Are you still in here, Eliza? She might have left. She's like, enough of this. <laughs> I want that fudge, yeah. All right, we'll go get it for you. It has been taught in, in pretty much most cultures across the world that spirits can feed off of scent or smell. Food offerings is a way to entice spirits and to help them feed, whether it be love, whether it be food, uh, whether it be completion in their life, it, it doesn't matter. Offering food is a way of satisfying them for a, of a small period. It's a way of you know giving them something to help them calm their spirit and craving. Eliza, I bought you some chocolate. Oh, I got a little spike here. Smell that, isn't that wonderful? Can you uh, make one of the meter spike up so we know that you're here with us? You really enjoying the fudge a lot? Yeah? Good, I'm glad you're happy. Can you smell the fudge? Or the chocolate? Are you still here with us, Eliza? Nothing, I don't feel anything really. Yeah, I'm feeling absolute zero. You know, that we might have just, we might have just worn them out. I mean, we might have hit our bottom level with it right now that we've just, we've, we've pushed them as far as we can push them tonight. That they're just gonna hide from us. Well, that's one thing we can kind of say with her. I mean, we haven't, seen anything or heard anything being pushed or moved. moved. Whatever happened upstairs could have been done by somebody else looking for attention. Possibly. And I don't know who that would have been. We can't seem to contact anybody else. All right, we're going back into the lighthouse for the last time here. Is there anybody in here? Spiker meter. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Getting something. Are you checking us out? Oh, wow. Oh, that's pretty neat. Look at that. Is this the first time you've talked to us tonight? Is this Eliza? No. That's what I wondered. 
I remember before, whatever that one was, and I was asking, it was saying it wasn't anything associated with this place. It was just a wandering one, which is, which is interesting. Are you William? William, we've been trying to talk to you all night. <laughs> so this is William, just so I know. Okay, excellent. Well, my name is Chris. This here's Alan. Hey, William. Come a long way to talk to you. <laughs> Are you happy, William? Are you sad? Well, sorry to hear that. I'm very sorry to hear that, okay? Is your wife in here with us too? No. So it's just you. Okay. Is there any way you can make a noise for us? Are you yelling right now? Sorry, you need to actually hit something. We can't, we can't hear you unless you're yelling into the mic and you're I'm hearing you that way. We need you to like pound on a bar or stairs or the wall. I look at that thing's just going crazy. Staying on for a long time. That's a yeah. long time for the K2 to stay on. All right, William. Uh... Is this your favorite place to be? The lighthouse? Yes. Does it make you feel happy? Did he live here? Yes, William Harn lived here. He died of tuberculosis in the keeper's house. Oh. That's when Kate took over. The camera just shut off. Oh, probably because of the battery. Yeah, it's a pity it's sort of low morning. Weird. Maybe, maybe drain the battery? Yeah. Out of it? Battery drains another thing that happens. During our conversation with William, our cameraman's battery just completely went dead. So we were getting spikes and then the cameraman's battery died. Did you run off with his fuel? Oh, you did, Whoa. did you? <laughs> That's not very nice. I will tell you that the battery was showing full. Because yeah, I just replaced that battery and then we were just over at the house. So. That was a battery drain from the room. <laughs> so, yeah, he did it. Do you feel better now that you've gotten that energy? Okay. <laughs> well, glad we could help. Do you have enough energy now to make some noise? No. Did you die of tuberculosis? Do you feel better now, William? Oh, good. Glad to hear it. William, I got a question for you. I'm hoping you can answer. Are there certain things about the afterlife that we're not supposed to know? Okay, are there certain things that you're not allowed to tell us? Are there, are there rules? Interesting. Yeah, there that is. is very interesting. Yeah. Okay, let me ask this, William. Okay, if you're ready, do you know that you're dead? Okay. Nice. Does it bother you? No. Okay. No. All right. Okay. Getting that odd feeling again. <clears throat> William, is being dead a lot different than being alive? Or is it the same?
Do you want us to change the topic? Again. Well, we got the important questions answered. Yeah. I figured he was probably an older guy. He could cope with the afterlife a lot better than Eliza could. You still here, Harn? Let us know. Yeah, I thought I heard something too. Oh, oh. Thank you. Appreciate that. William, are you free to go anywhere you want to? Yes. Like, can you go outside of the grounds of the lighthouse? No. Are you confined just to the lighthouse area? Do you need more energy to talk to us? I tell you what, if you need more energy, take it out of this camera, all right? I give you permission to do that. Or take it out of me. Mm. Don't think he's gonna. I wanted to ask him if he has uh, unfinished business here, if that's why he's hanging around. The Tibetan Book of the Dead, it talks about a lot of uh, different uh, what do you call them? Planes? Bardos. Planes of existence, yeah. They've got to work through their stuff before they're allowed to continue on further to a higher plane and get out of stuck from where they're at. So sort of like a spiritual tier system? Uh-huh, yeah. Maybe, maybe since I asked him if he could go anywhere, he's like, oh, I'll just do that. Let's find out. Wait, wait for you guys. You guys have completely thrown them off. Yeah, I know. Made them think about things, which is good. It got their attention. They weren't quite sure how to react. All right, well, I think that's about it for that one. All right, we'll hit the basement one last time and then... Uh... All right, William. Well, I want to thank you for being such a gracious host. And uh, we've really had a nice time talking to you. I hope you feel likewise. Our night was rapidly coming to an end, but there was one last thing we wanted to do. William, are you down here? Kate? Eliza? We're going to be leaving soon. We just want to say bye. Thanks for all your help and our questions. That was greatly appreciated. How are you feeling about this room, guys? Uh, it's, I don't feel it's empty, but I don't feel like it's something full. Like it's just sort of like kind of peeking in. Right. Oh, oh, who's down here with us? Is this Eliza? Yes? Is this William? Ooh, whoa. That solid red. Are you William? Okay, wait. Are you both down here? You're both down here. <laughs> Are you here to say goodnight? Interesting way to end the investigation. They're self-aware. Is there anything you'd like to tell us before we leave? No? <laughs> Did you enjoy the sweets? William, are you here? Anyone? I guess I just want to say goodbye. I think they meant it when they wanted wow. to say goodnight. Well, good night, guys. I, I appreciate all your help and uh, answering all our questions. It's really appreciated. And uh, I think we'll leave you alone for the rest of the night. All right. Excellent investigation. It's awesome. And that was the perfect way to end the... With them both show you that, like, yeah. we, couldn't, we couldn't have tried that. Yeah, you know? I couldn't like... have asked for a better ending to that.
We went down into the basement for the last time and said goodbye to both the entities that we were talking to tonight, both Eliza and William. And it was just nice for them to kind of show up together and just say goodbye to us. I couldn't ask for a better ending to the evening. Now this group did ask some questions that I haven't really ever heard before. I've been doing these tours for almost two years now, so I think some of the questions really got all the spirits here on edge and in a way confused them a bit, but at the same time interested them. Now even with some of my longer private tours, the longest EMF session like that I've ever gotten I'd say was a solid 15 minutes. This felt like it was nearly a solid 45, maybe even an hour, but altogether this was one of the longest sessions I've ever seen, and I'm glad to be a part of it. All right, Matt, well, thanks for all your help. I appreciate yeah. it. It was an honor to meet you guys. Yeah, appreciate right, everything. Have such a great thanks for all your course. skill with us. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you guys again soon. Certainly, we will, definitely. All right, Alan, we had a very interesting night at the uh, St. Augustine Lighthouse. You hear that, girl? You hear that? One thing that really interests me is we asked uh, William, if there are certain things that he is not allowed by some rule, universal law, law yeah, right? Yeah. that they can't tell us. Uh, the same with Eliza. She also uh, would not answer certain questions, just put the wall up there and shut down as soon as we started getting into that, you know, tiptoeing into those areas of the waters. So it's interesting that both spirits responded in the same way. So it was good that we were able to gather some information about it finally and bring it to the public's attention. Now I have to say this was one of the most interesting investigations I have ever had because when I got home from this, I had all this information, my head was spinning. I kept thinking, well, who's policing the afterlife? How do you get in trouble? What are the consequences if you get in trouble? And once I started trying to figure those things out, it led me down a path to become a full-fledged ghost behaviorist, ghost doctor that understands the pitfalls of spirits. And we'll explore these in future episodes in the rest of this season.